now? How about now? All right. How are y'all doing? Boy, this is a rowdy bunch right here. Right here. How about that side? This is a rowdy bunch back here. <laughs> hey, it's good to see y'all today. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Here's. <laughs> uh, where? Where is old, where's old, uh, hey, Jim, how do you call cattle? Where's old Mike Shirley? Uh, who else? How do you call cattle? All right. Yep. I like that. And me, I'm simple. Come on. Or. Yeah. Feed book. That, that right there works. <laughs> Uh, and they come on. Man, I want to tell you today that Jesus is saying, come on. Whoop. And it's time we follow. It's time we follow. You know, we were talking out there today, and it's kind of, I don't know, it's just kind of been a theme here lately that, you know, that, uh, that I've missed. Uh, not that it's a thing that I missed opportunities, but it's about missed opportunities. It's about the Lord laying on our hearts somebody's name to call, to text, to check on something maybe that he wants to do in your life and he's calling you uh, and you can feel him moving in you maybe to pray more or at a different time or to worship or just put on good old worship. He's calling you to do something different because he wants to take you to another place in him. He wants to take you to a deeper place in him. He wants to move you into a greater relationship with him. And if we're paying attention, you know, for me, I wish Jesus would go, come on. But so many times it's, come on, follow me, come this way, don't go that way. It's that still, small voice. It's my prayer today as, uh, as we just welcome and get into the time that, that he has set aside for us, that it's my prayer for, I, for us that we pay attention to that still, small voice to see what it is he wants to do in our life, how it is that he wants to use us. Not just here at Trails Inn. We come here, get fired up, pumped up. You get your marching orders, and then you go outside these walls, and you get to put it into practice. You get, to, you get to work it out. You get to work out your salvation with fear and trembling. Isn't that awesome? That it's not, you don't just get to experience Jesus in here. He wants to go home with you. He wants to, go, he wants to be with you when you cross over that threshold. And he wants, to be, uh, he wants to be real in your life, working every day. Whether it's feeding, whether it's, uh, it's grocery shopping, at home, on the job, wherever it is, he wants to be a part of your everyday life. I'm so thankful that he's a, he's a God that just wants to have a relationship with his kids. Amen? He just wants to spend time with his kids. And so often time, I got to admit, I don't have time for my father. Or better said, I don't make time for my father. Mm. I don't like it when God does that to me. Whew. I just try to be real honest and transparent. I want to do a better job of that. Amen? That, amen. Y'all want me to do a better job of that too? <laughs> I really don't know. I picked up this calendar, but it's for February. and, and uh, <laughs> So we've already done these things. So... <laughs> This is what you missed in February. I'm pretty sure we're going to do a lot of these same things in March. We do have church on Wednesday. And, uh, no, we are going to have, uh, we'll have open arena on Tuesdays. Uh, you sure, Tuesday evenings, you sure want to be a, a, a part of that. It's been fun. Not here lately. You had too much rain. And, and uh, you, you, would need, uh, you would need to put uh, flippers on, on your horses. And, and, uh, but it's, uh, it, we had that going on. And then I know it. When is the next, uh, when's the next open heart? If you want to, are y'all meeting somewhere and then heading out? Or? Eastman Road, Jalapeno Tree, open heart. If you've been wanting to plug into a women's ministry, I knew that was probably coming up because it was, it, was, uh, it was on the 7th of February. If you missed that one, you get another opportunity, Eastman Road, Jalapeno Tree, uh, you just look for Miss Sherry, and uh, Miss Sherry, go ahead and stand up so all the ladies know what you look like. Okay, you can sit back down. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that, so just look for, if you've been wanting to plug in, it, it, ladies, if you've been wanting to plug in to a, to a short enough good women's ministry, that you can meet them there. It's going to be good food, fun, fellowship, and 
I promise you, you're just gonna you're gonna have a great time. I know you got senior saints. Um, not this week. No senior saints no, this week. It'll resume here. next voting Tuesday. Here. Voting here. Voting. Yeah, that's right. Hey, uh, so on the first, on the first, from is it 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. We'll be they'll they'll open up. This will be one of the one of the voting stations. And uh, so on on uh, March the first Tuesday, uh, you, if you're from here, you come on in and uh, and you you vote right here. What else we got going on? Men's prayer breakfast Saturday. All right, good stuff. What time? Start cooking at six thirty. That's going to be some show enough good time too. Safety team meeting right after church today. If you've been after the breakfast on Saturday. Hey, so we still need a church photographer. So if you are good at it, if you're bad at it, we need someone who's good at it to partner with someone who's bad at it so they can both serve. <laughs> uh, we, we, uh, we have been looking for a church photographer and, and uh, you know, there's a lot of things that go on that we're just not capturing and, and uh, we want to be able to, uh, to do that. We have someone who can upload that we just need somebody who to take them. Anything else? Twelfth, March the twelfth. Yeah. So if you're looking for an opportunity to serve, you you don't even need to to pray about it. You just need to come on. Uh, that is uh, the play day series is on a flyer. It's right outside on the bar, and uh, you pick one of those up. Pick one of those up on your way out, and plan on coming and, and helping that group. It'll be a it'll be a sure enough good time. Men and fences. Men and fences. Every Thursday, we got men and fences start eating at. at uh, six men and fences start eating at six o'clock. They feed you physically. They feed you spiritually. About six thirty, guaranteed, guaranteed. Man, that's good stuff. Y'all ready to see what it is God has for you today? Go ahead, Bo. Bo, come on. Amen. Yeah, it's good stuff. Thank you, Bo. So uh, some have asked about, well, hey, do y'all have uh, like Sunday school? No, we do have a round pen Bible study. And uh, man, I'll tell you what, there has been so much good fruit come out of that, so many good reports. And uh, and they tell me, every, the awesome thing is, they tell me every time that uh, Bo trashes the preacher, they come back and all they say is, you ain't going to believe what Bo said about you today. So I'm trying to get messages done earlier so I can get in round pen, and then Bo tells me, we don't need you in round pen, Bo. <laughs> they, they, just, uh, they just finished up Romans. So much good come out of that. And then Exodus, they, they're, they're in the book of Exodus now. So y'all come on. If you want to grow deeper in the Lord by, by, grow, by learning more, driving deeper into the Word so that you can increase in your faith and grow in your relationship with Jesus. Round pen Bible study on Sunday morning is, a, is definitely a good place to make that happen. Youth on Wednesdays, so if you got some, if you got some youth, some youths, uh, man, y'all bring them on Wednesday in uh, uh, Laren. Uh, they'll be sure and, and, uh, and welcome them and, uh, and love on them. That's Landry and Aaron. And... Uh, and uh, they'll they'll be sure and uh, and love on them. I'll tell you what's awesome is there's there's a lot of uh, youth that come. Their, their parents don't even come here, but they're faithful to show up every single Wednesday. And and they they come with the hard questions and they come with life experiences. And I'm I'm sure thankful for uh, for these youth leaders who who are bold and willing to step up and and to take those questions and go and see what the word has to say about that and to love them. And man, we they they love your crazy kids. It, I mean, it just don't get no no more more real than that. Anything else before we, before we pray in? Y'all ready to see what it is God has for you today? Amen. Me too. Me too. All right, let's go to the Lord. Father God, I just praise you and I thank you, Father, for an opportunity, Lord, just to, uh, to worship you. I thank you, Father, for this time that we've set aside now, Lord, just to get into your presence and, and uh, just to focus on you, sing praises to you, and just to, just to love on you and worship you. God, I thank you and I praise you for your presence that's here right now. I thank you, Lord, for touching hearts and lives. I thank you, Lord, for changing hearts. I pray, Father, that in the name of Jesus, we not leave here like we came in Jesus' name. We love you and we thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. So as far as the lights, 
So we're going to need an increase in giving today. We were able to pay half the electric bill. <laughs> we're trying something different. We want to, you know, change. We want to change things up a little bit. And and, and sounds like, man, it's just too bright to worship in here. So we're going to dim the lights down and take away your excuse. And I bet. No more excuses. That's right. Good morning. It is good. Well, two people are good morning. Um, good morning. Thank you. We we are going to worship this morning, and we want you to worship with us. So um, let's worship. Lord, I hope this day is good. I'm feeling empty and misunderstood. I should be thankful, Lord, I know I should. But, Lord, I hope this day is good. Lord, have you forgotten me? I've been praying to you faithfully. I'm not saying I'm a righteous man, but, Lord, I hope. Thunder, Lord, send down the rain. But when you're planning just how it should be, plan a good day for me. Lord, I hope this day is good. I'm feeling empty and misunderstood. I should be thankful, Lord, I know I should. But Lord, I hope this day is good. You've been the king since the dawn of time. Now all I'm looking is a little more less trying. I might be hard for the devil to do. It would be easy for you. Lord, I hope this day. Feeling empty and misunderstood. I should be thankful, Lord, I know I should. But Lord, I hope this day is good. Lord, I hope this day is good. I'm feeling empty and misunderstood. I should be thankful, Lord, I know I should. But Lord, I hope this day is good. But Lord, I hope this day is good. Through my disappointment, striving, discontentment, I cast my every care. 
answer all his questions or lie to hide the truth. Would you welcome him with open arms or even let him in? If Jesus comes tomorrow, to tell him of your sin if Jesus comes tomorrow what then if the sky turns black as midnight in the middle of the day and somehow thinking about this song this weekend and uh, to say that my life has turned out the way that I planned it is um, not the way I planned it but um, that's okay Uh, this song you know says stand still and in John chapter uh, 16 verse 33 it says in this life you will have troubles but he says to take heart because he has already overcome the world Mm -hmm. so we win we just may not you may not be winning right now but you do win so to me that says not just stand still but rest rest easy step away stop worrying my mama says what worries a sin anyway so uh, you shouldn't worry even though it is a hard thing not to worry but you know just just to step back away from it and take your hands off of it and let God handle it. And um, I've found that when you do that, that he does handle it. And it may not be in your time, but it will be in perfect time. The Father has a plan. Though it's hard.
Let there be light. Good stuff. Man. <laughs> y'all still doing okay? Yeah. All right. Man, man, thank y'all for that. Oh, man. Man, it's good to be back, church. I mean, I, I was only gone, I think, a Sunday and a Wednesday, but it felt, well, I was here Wednesday. Uh, Chris brought a message. I was gone a couple of Sundays out of three. <laughs> and, uh, man, it feels good. It feels good to, to be back and, and uh, with all of you. And welcome. Welcome, Trails Inn Cowboy Church, Harrison County. We're, we're certainly glad you, you showed up today. And how many of you here for the first time? Any first-timers? I see. Man, okay, come. Hey, it's good to have you all today. And uh, I, I pray you come back. And <laughs> man, I don't know. I got to thinking today, and, and, uh, and I just pray that the Lord speak to you through His Holy Spirit today, and that you're encouraged to stay on the road, or get back on the road, or get on the right trail. Stephen Curtis Chapman sang a song years ago that said, The Road to Christ. They say it may not be the easy way, but I found that to be true. Yeah, but I also found that there's no better place on earth than the road that leads to heaven. No other place I'd rather be. Man, I'll tell you what, I, I've, <laughs> I'm like a, a bunch of you. Um, and if you're like me, I know that uh, I've tried a lot of the rest. And it sure works out good now that I've found the best. His name is Jesus Christ a real relationship with Jesus Christ. And even though we're children of the Most High God, there are times in life when it all goes south. Y'all ever been there? Is there anybody not been there? No. All of us have been there. When things are going the way you want it, I mean, it's just, man, there's too much money at the end of the month. Praise God for you if you got that problem. We are happy for you. <laughs> Because so many of us, there's too much month at the end of the money. But God is so faithful. He's so good. You know, every one of us have gone through times where, man, it just all went south. And uh, I tell you, God is so cool. It was about two or three days ago, uh, uh, getting, getting ready uh, in the evening, getting ready for bed. And, and uh, God just started, I got the title first, which normally doesn't happen. Usually it's a story or I get the I get the word first, and, and then something happens that week, or, or, or uh, the Lord brings back to my remem remembrance something that happened in the past, and then it, all the message just all kind of comes together. And God gave me the title first when it all goes south. And then I really, honestly, I really thought I was going to be uh, in 2 Kings chapter 7 because that's the story that I was thinking of, the four lepers. And, and uh, that's not where God took me. We're going to get into where God took me later. And uh, we're going to circle back to where we were, but something that I wanted to cover, we'll get, in, we'll get into that a little bit later. So I had a good piece of it. I had a title, which is a good start. And, uh, and I, had, I had a couple of different directions that I could go. And I got it early, praise God. Yeah, I like that. And, uh, and then um, we went yesterday to a, a guy named uh, Duke Burgess. Uh, he's putting on a Revelation Tour Rodeo series and uh, the first one, and my gosh, it was cold. Thank you, Jesus, for a covered arena in Marshall. And uh, so okay, uh, Creed, and, and, uh, Creed and Carson, they entered up in the, in the mutton busting. And this is them. I mean, when we got there, uh, this is them right there. And they, you see that big old smile on their face? 
I mean, it's 32 degrees, and their teeth are chattering. They're really not smiling. They're t- but their teeth are chattering. Through that smile, they're excited. They're happy. Man, they're like, we're going to ride sheep today, G. We're going to bust some mutton. And, uh, man, I'm telling you, they're strutting like this. Oh, shoot. Bring them on. Bring them on. I'll ride them all. I'll ride everything you got. Boy, they're talking trash. They're excited. And as cold as it is, and it was pouring rain, uh, but, man, they're excited right here. Oh, oh, oh uh, Creed, he says he's got his, he's got his J.B. Mooney. He comes, J.B. Mooney, pants on. Man, he's ready to ride. And uh, he used to just absolutely love Lane Frost, and then he started watching J.B. Mooney videos, and he just fell in love with, with, uh, with J.B. Mooney. And uh, so here he is. He's excited. He doesn't talk to his sister Carson into coming out there with him because it works a whole lot better when there's two of you. And uh, so they're, they're happy. They're pumped up. And uh, they get all the way in there waiting for the moment. We go in there, and, and uh, me and Clint went with them. There was a whole bunch of kids. Boy, I bet you there were 30 kids signed up for the mutton busting. And, and uh, boy, they were just lined up everywhere. And we were over there with, uh, with uh, Carson and Creed, and I knew this was going to be their first time to ride sheep. And I said, man, I'll tell you, don't even try to get no cool points. You lay down on them, and you grab a hoe of wool with both hands, and you hang on. And uh, don't be J.B. Mooney in it. Don't sit up. Don't try to grab a hoe and ride one hand. You lay on them, and you hold on. They don't have any idea what they're about to face. <laughs> get on. And uh, first, when we go around there, they got, they got all the bulls right there pinned up, and you're passing them right there, and Creed's down here, and he's looking up at this bull, and he said, <laughs> like, no, buddy. Whew. No, he's excited. Now, we get over there, and we pass the sheep, and I said, them, now they're really pumped up. I'm taller than them. You bet you, buddy. It's going to be good. We line up on the fence. And uh, we're taking pictures, getting cool points. We're high-fiving. Everything's good. Everything's good. A time of their life. That's just kind of how life is. Everything's good. Time of your life. You're excited about what, what God's done in your life. You're excited about life in general. Everything is going your way. You have no idea what tomorrow brings. Amen? Neither did they. They had no idea what five minutes later was going to bring. So here they are. They go from this right before they call. Next up, we want, we want Carson and Creed McCowan. Y'all get ready, kids. Y'all get ready. Right before they said them, or they had just said their name. Y'all get, y'all get ready. Y'all about two or three down. And uh, so they're there. The very next thing after that, this kid got on a rocket. That son of a gun shot straight out from the... As soon as they opened the gate, that song gun shot straight out. And when it did, it took off running, stumbled, fell. That kid had his leg. Man, that song gun was a long-legged rascal. He had his legs wrapped around and was holding around the neck. So when it fell, it toppled over the top of him. He comes up, ah! and show that next picture. They went from this to <laughs> It ain't fun no more. They're like, oh, heck no. I'm out. I'm done. Man, I was laughing this morning. I wished we could zoom in on Carson. She's like this. And Creed is like this. Well, they ain't high-fiving no more. They ain't laughing. They ain't, it, it ain't, it ain't. We're, it ain't fun. And they're praying, Lord, don't let me draw that one. And we're thinking, they're probably okay. I wasn't paying attention to the count. <laughs> they are number, I don't know, it's like 15 and 16. Well, they had 14 sheep. Yeah. <laughs> so we... we they go round them all the way back up. We get them back in. They get them run down the alley, start loading them up in the chutes, and, uh, and Carson goes first. And I won't show you the video in case they watch later. I don't want to demoralize them. I just want to say it all went south. 
It all went south. Here's the funny thing. When they were watching everybody else ride, it was all good. You know, when we're not the one that's being affected by the thing that's going on in someone else's life, man, we pray for them. We encourage them. We love them. We lift them up. But it ain't me. Amen? (laughs) At least that ain't me. But now, all of a sudden, your name gets called. And it's your turn next to load up in that chute of life, to climb on what you ain't never done before, and to holler outside. Matter of fact, (laughs) she wasn't hollering outside. She was on, but she wasn't the one saying, I'm ready. Let's go, boys. She was like, ah, whoom. The gate slung open. Pow! That rocket shot out. And, man, I'm going to tell you, thank God the ground was there. She still would have been doing backflips. That's exactly how life is. We're watching others go through those trials, those situations, those things in our life. There's always going to be those that are in a trial, in a storm, those that just came out of one, or those that are about to go in one. There's going to be those three. And take advantage of the opportunities that you have when it ain't you. Man, I wanted y'all to see those pictures. God is so good to... That was the rest of the, that's what I needed right there for their, to know the direction that, that, that God wanted us to go. When you're looking at that right there, uh, Donna touched right on my very first scripture. Jesus says in John 16, I have told you all this so you may have peace in me. Here on earth, you will have many trials and sorrows, but take heart because I have overcome the world. Jesus said, Jesus said, here on earth you will have many what? Trials and sometimes those are not the same thing. We've all gone through trials and it wasn't sorrowful. And we've all maybe not been in a trial but had an experience in life that was sorrowful. But take heart because I have overcome the world um, I was gone last Sunday. Joe Cox filled in. Did he tell y'all about Mimo? He did. Is that not awesome? I knew she served on the on the facility team. I had no idea. I mean, I knew she served on a team. I had no, I really didn't know it was a facility team, and I didn't know, even though she was wheelchair bound. But here's what here's what 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 was awesome about this. You know, her life her life. Uh, she was a beautician for fifty years, and her life. Her health did go south. It did go south. And really got, it was very evident when we were talking with her youngest daughter, Tracy, and she was there, and I shared this Wednesday, when uh, the rental place came to pick up the bed, Tracy was there uh, with Papa, and uh, they had been married 65 years, and, and they're there, and they're taking out this hospital bed, and then they're taking out this breathing machine, and then they're taking out this nebulizer, and then they're taking out these oxygen tanks, and then they're taking out these walkers, and you look over there, and there's a wheelchair, and you look over there, and there's a motorized scooter, and you're looking at all these things that she endured through seven hip replacements, several shoulder replacements, COPD, just terrible health. All these things that she endured. Her life at one point, everything was good. It was wonderful. Things were happening. Then all of a sudden, her health went south. But the awesome thing was, her faith did not. When you went to visit her, even though her health was south, her faith, her faith was north, her face was pointed towards Jesus, you go to visit her and she's encouraging you. She's telling you about Jesus. She's giving you hope. Even while she's in a bed and can't get up with oxygen, she's the one encouraging you. She's that. She was taking heart. Because she knew in this world, it's not a matter of if, it's a matter of when. You will have, we will have many trials and sorrows. The trials that she went through later became our sorrow. And we got to say say goodbye to a a godly woman, a sure enough follower of Jesus Christ who made sure that her children knew that she followed a man who rode a white horse. And on his saddle reads, King of kings and Lord of lords. That's who she followed. And she led us that same direction. What a greater, there's not a greater legacy to leave behind 
than to leave behind a legacy of Jesus Christ in the lives of your children. She had every reason to be upset with God. She had every reason in the natural, in the, faith, in the, in the flesh, to blame him. God, I served you. Why am I going through these things? It wasn't why, it was who. I'm serving you no matter what goes on. Even though she was in a scooter, she signed up not for the greeting team. She signed up for the facility team. Like, what are you going to do? You going to wipe off tables? And she made sure that she made phone calls to every single person on that team every single time there was a work day, and she made it simple. I don't need to hear. <laughs> she was just straight to the point. I don't need to hear any reason why you can or cannot. I just need to know, are you going to be there or are you not going to be there? And Joe Cox served on that team. He wasn't even a leader yet. She, he said, when he told me that morning what he was going to teach on, he said, I chuckled. <laughs> she said, he said, I got a call from her, and I knew Miss Betty Sue and, uh, from, from church, and I knew she was wheelchair-bound, and the way she put it, either you is or you is not. Either you are or you are not going to be there. I just need to know yes or no. <laughs> he said, I laughed to myself. He said, but then I thought, that shaped, that shaped me when I became team leader. I just need to know. Are you going to be there or are you not? If you're not, fine. But those that are, I need to know so I can depend on you. Wow. Man, that's good stuff. Here on earth, you will have many trials and sorrows. There are going to be times in life when it goes south. 1 Corinthians 15, 57 says, But thank God. But thank God. Why? Because he gives us the victory. Thank God! Exclamation point. He gives us victory. Over what? Sin and death. Through who? Our Lord Jesus Christ. I love this. I love the wording of this. But thank God, and I always, I don't know why I do this, but I always put in there, why? I, always, I ask myself these questions when I'm reading the Word, and it answers itself backwards and forwards. Because of the Lord Jesus Christ, who gave us victory over sin and death, we thank God. It's backwards and forwards. But thank God, He gives us victory over sin and death through our Lord Jesus Christ. He gives us victory. And I like this over sin and death. Church, we can have victory right now over sin. We don't have to wait until we're walking on the glory land, streets of gold. I don't, I don't have to wait until I'm hugging Mima again. I don't have to wait until we see Papa again. I don't have to wait till we're in the glory land to get victory. It says he gives us victory over sin right now and death later. That's both. So many of us, and I, I'm including myself, I walk defeated because I let sin kick my butt or kick me in the teeth. I get upset because of the things I've done or said what I didn't want to say and I did what I didn't want to do instead of wanted to do instead of, didn't, instead of what I wanted to say. And then I mess all that up, and then I get down. Man, I suck as a Christian. I ain't even worthy to be their pastor. God, I don't even know why you called me. What were you thinking? And then I beat myself up. Anybody ever been there? Man, don't we do that? Christ came to give us victory now over sin and later over death so that we finally make that final journey, that final walk, that final breath in this life and take our first breath in heaven. We have victory because of Christ Jesus over death. <laughs> Church, just knowing about Jesus, just knowing scriptures, you may concite the Bible from Genesis to Revelation, and you may know about Jesus, but that won't be enough to live and walk in victory. You got to be in a real relationship with Jesus, with him as the lead in control to walk in victory, especially when it all goes south. I love this part right here, and death through our Lord. When Jesus Christ is your Lord, that means he's your, he's your lead. He's the one leading you. There's a difference between him being your Savior and being your Lord. When you say, yes, Lord, he's your Lord. When we're obeying and doing what it is that he's leading us to do, he's our Lord. Does that make sense? Thank you, one person. <laughs>
<laughs> uh, don't wait until it all goes south to spend time with Jesus. Do it while it's all good. And then when it's not, you'll walk in victory. There may be some of you here today, and you're saying, oh, man, I'm there. I'm there, brother. You don't even know. Life has gone south for me. My marriage has gone south, or my relationship with my kids have gone south, or my job has gone south, or my health has gone south, or my, my salary, my finances have gone south. Whatever it is, you're here today, and you were needing something from God, and things are not so good. It was. It was. But now it's all gone south. It could be sometimes as quick as, as a, a transmission that goes out. It, can, it could all go south that quick. Genesis 26, uh, we covered this pretty good. This is the story of Isaac, and we covered that in a series called Stopped Up Well. If you, uh, you want to go back and find that, man, I'll tell you what, that, is, uh, that, is, that, 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 was good, that was good stuff right there. There was a piece that was right at the end, and we're going to cover it today. I tried and tried and tried to do one more part because I wanted to cover this last piece. And God did not lead me that direction. And I'm, I may be ignorant, but I ain't stupid. So I knew I wasn't going to go the direction I wanted to go and just put something together anyway and give you a speech. I wanted, to get, I wanted to scatter some sure enough seed that was provided by the Lord. So I knew I wasn't going to do that if that's not what he wanted me to do. I mess up enough anyway without <laughs> taking a message in my own hands and doing it my own way. So I waited. I didn't go there. But I wanna, I'm going to skim right across the top. We see, uh, we see Isaac and his family. Things have gotten real bad. It's a severe famine. He wants to leave, and he wants to go to Egypt. It's not as bad in Egypt. He wants to leave. He wants to go to Egypt and take his whole family there. The actual place that he was leaving is that what God gave to Abraham, his father, and said, this is the land that I've given your father. So he's trying to leave that land when Isaac is the promise to Abraham, so he's trying to leave what it is that God's promised the father through Isaac. He's trying to go someplace else. And God stops him and says, don't go to Egypt. Don't go. Stay, and I'll bless you. He stayed, and God blessed him. God kept on blessing him. He blessed him because he obeyed God. He did exactly what it was that God told him to do. And when he did, God blessed him. It works out really well when God says, if you obey my word, I'll bless you for doing it. Oh, he does say that. <laughs> So he didn't go. He stayed. He became wealthy. That means he wasn't, but now he is. He became wealthy. Anytime you become rich in an area, it's, and, and, and there's going to be some people that rise up and not too happy about that, especially those that knew you when. Who did they think they are? I, I, I knew them when they were running the streets. I knew them when... when <laughs> I'm not even going to go there. They will, try, <laughs> they will try to throw me off. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> Uh, whew. There were some people that weren't happy. Genesis 26, 15 said that, the matter of fact, the Philistines came and they filled up all of Isaac's wells with dirt. So these were those that were dug by the servants of his father Abraham. I don't even have to tell you how important water is. We, we, uh, we know that. So all of that happened, and that's where we got through when we were in a stopped-up well through, through, uh, through that series. But I wanted to get right back here. So the Philistines, which were neighboring area, they uh, came in and they stopped up all, not just some, all of Isaac's wells with dirt that had been dug by the servants of Abraham. You may feel like your flow that you had with the Lord is gone. You may feel that. You may feel like that. You hadn't flowed in the Lord like you used to flow. You hadn't felt God like you used to feel. You hadn't been encouraged about the Lord or His Word or about worship or about going to church. You may be in a place where you just feel so dry and so desolate, like the flow in my life has stopped, and I don't even know what happened or when it happened. All I know is my relationship with the Lord has gone south. I won't even ask for a show of hands because you already know who you are. I want to tell you two things. One, God didn't move. It ain't Jesus who moved. It's me. It's me. He's steadfast and consistent. He is not just right where you left him. He is right where you're taking him. 
right there waiting on you to turn back towards you. If he said, I'll never leave you, I'll never forsake you. If you're like me, I'm not very proud of the places that I took him. <laughs> but I want to tell you, church, the second thing is, under that rubble, under that rubble in the well, there's still water that's flowing. Just because they piled a bunch of earth inside that, that uh, well, it don't mean that that Ogallala aquifer is not still flowing. That's a West Texas aquifer. That's where we get our water out west. Is not still flowing underneath there. Church, if you feel dry, if you feel stopped up, I want to tell you, that water is still flowing. You got to do two things. Number one, if you're taking notes, you got to decide to stay. You got to decide to stay. Genesis 26, 17 through 19 said, so Isaac moved to the Gerar Valley. And you're like, whoa, 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 whoa. You said stay. He moved. He's still in Gerar. He just moved to the Gerar Valley and lived there instead. He reopened the wells his father had dug, which the Philistines had filled in after Abraham's death. Isaac renamed them using the names Abraham had given them. His shepherds also dug in the Gerar Valley, and they found a gushing spring. You got to decide to stay, number one. Don't give up on the Lord. He never gave up on you. Church, God never gave up on you, ever, ever. He loves you, even when, and I stopped right and right there. He loves you even when, and I put a comma where there wasn't one, and I inserted, no. He loves you especially when you don't deserve it. <laughs> Why does he do that? What kind of love is that? That I especially don't deserve his favor. I especially don't deserve his love. <laughs> and he seemed like it's those moments when he loves you even more. Those of you who have been like me, great sinners, you felt that great love in times where you deserved a good old thumping. But that ain't what God gave me. He loves us especially when we don't deserve it. Deuteronomy 31, 6. Let's read that together. So be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid. Do not panic before them. For the Lord your God will personally go ahead of you. He will neither fail you. This is what I wanted you to see. He will neither fail you or a what? He will neither fail you or abandon you. You go back to the very last thing Jesus said in Matthew. He said, you can be sure of this. I'll never do the same. I'll never, and I'll never forsake you. I'll never abandon you. If he says never, church, it means never. For God will not leave you or forsake you. God is and forever will be for you and not against you. Through the deepest trials, know that Jesus is with you and know that he has already won the toughest battles for you. Stay with Jesus. Stay with Jesus, and he will see you through. The second part of that, so Isaac and his family, they stayed, and it said that they dug out. The second thing is, you got to dig back down to the water, church. You got to dig back down. You got some work to do. I put in here number two, you got to dig to the water, or you got to dig a well. We got to dig a well, church. When the Philistines fill in the well, was there still water flowing underneath in that well? Yes, absolutely there was. But now we've got the work to do. Remember, the only reason that the Philistines were even able to come and fill in those wells is because Isaac left them unprotected. Isaac left them unguarded. I think it's Matthew 26, somewhere that says, be alert and pray, otherwise temptation will overpower you for though the spirit is willing the flesh is weak he, he was complacent things were good he was riding high Ooh, hoo, 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 hoo. i got plenty of money everything's going my way so he had all the people somewhere else doing whatever else they were doing instead of out in the field where they needed to be tending to the livestock watching over well the number one resource in 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 their lives was water, was water. 
They were doing everything other than making sure that resource stayed intact, protected. So many of us are guilty of the same. We left our hearts unguarded, unprotected, and the enemy has crept in and filled our hearts with ungodly things of this world. But the rivers of life are still flowing, and we got to dig in the Word. We got to dig into worship and let that take the place of the world in our hearts. (laughs) You only have so much room in a well. You only have so much room in your heart. And when you and what you put into that is up to you. You get to choose that. And you may have to take some stuff or junk out to make room for more Jesus. There may have there may be some things in there that we need to get out and give Jesus all the chambers of our heart. It won't be easy, church, and the enemy will wrestle with you the whole way. But it's through those times, it's through those times that uh, you will feel the love of your Father and His amazing ability to restore you and to make you whole, flowing in you the things of God. I want to read. Uh, I want to read uh, the rest of this in Genesis 26, and then, and then we'll. Uh, I'll call the band up. We'll be. We'll be done. The first thing is you got to stay. You got to decide to stay. Second thing is you got to decide to dig. You got to dig that out to get down to the water of the word. I love this. Genesis 26, 20 through 25. But then the local shepherds came and claimed the spring. This was the one his shepherds in 19. His shepherds also dug in the Gerar Valley and found a gushing spring. So they didn't just unstop all the others. They dug a new one. They hit water. There's water in their hills. They done hit it. But then the local shepherds came. Of course they did. Then the enemy came. Of course he does. (laughs) Man. This is our water, they said. And they argued over it with Isaac's herdsmen. So Isaac named that well argument because they argued about it with him. Isaac's men then dug dug another well. But again, there was a fight over it. So Isaac named it opposition. Abandoning that one, he dug another well. And the local people finally left him alone. So Isaac called it room enough. For he said, at last, the Lord has made room for us, and we'll, we will be able to thrive. From there, Isaac moved to Beersheba, where the Lord uh, appeared to him on the night of his arrival. I am the God of your father Abraham, he said. Do not be afraid, for I am with you and will bless you. I will give you many descendants, and they will become a great nation. I will do this because of my promise to Abraham, my servant. Then Isaac built an altar there and worshiped the Lord. He set up his camp outside that place, and he dug a well. (laughs) I don't know why. I just absolutely love the ending of that. And he dug a well. See, he found the source. He found the source of life, water. Church in us, our Lord, our Savior, our Jesus, our Word, our Spirit, it's a river of life flowing in us. If we've let ourselves, we'll let the band, if you're here, you go ahead and come back. If you've let yourself get entangled with things of this world, and now when you try to let down your bucket, yeah, say this is your well, and it's a deep well. It's your heart. There's water flowing right here. It's only a half a cup. Because Anne LaFontaine said the first half a cup is free. The next half cost you 10 bucks. I said, give me a half a cup. Down here, there's water, living water. But if, if we get entangled by the word, by the world, we get entangled and stopped up. Now all we can see is that. And when we try to let our bucket down to pull in time of need water, it's going to hit, boom, right on top. We got to remove that. We got to get untangled from that. We got to get removed from what it is that's got us bound up. We got to get that out so that we can flow. Here's the awesome thing. You get that out by getting in the Word. You get that out by getting in worship. You start replacing those things that have you entangled with things of the Word, with things of God, and the next thing you know, it's like uh, it's just like we, we, uh, we talked about that trough gets so full 
that all of those impurities, all those parasites, all that slime, all that algae, all that stuff starts to flow out until all you have left is crystal clear water. But if we never dig into the well, if we never get into the water, if we never get into the water of the word, that will never happen and you will never get victory. I just want to be real with you. Just wanting to be set free ain't enough. It ain't enough. But I promise you, you start getting into the word, you start making this word and, and, and getting in the presence of Jesus, you start making that a priority in your life, and I promise you, that word will get in you. You'll start to, to start living it out loud, and the things that have you tangled up, the things that have you jammed up, the things that have gone south, God will begin to turn those things around. Sure, you're going to have argument. Those in the world, the enemy's going to come against you. You're going to feel opposition. But the awesome thing was, he didn't give up and quit. He didn't say, you know what? This is crap. This is too much. They come against me with argument. They come against me with opposition. That's it. We're, we're done. It said that he went out and he dug another well. He dug another well. And then when there was room enough, he dug one more cool thing about that, and then I'll shut up, is that Isaac built an altar there. He built an altar there to reflect on the victory that God gave him, all the so that he could remember those things. It wasn't so that he could worship that pile of rocks. It was so that when he saw that pile of rocks, he could remember in his head all the awesome things that God did in his life. Because he stayed with Jesus, because he stayed with God, because he did what it is that God had told him to do from the beginning, because he obeyed God's word, he was able to to have victory. He was able to walk in victory, and he dug a well, and he dug a well. I want the band to go ahead and play what what uh, what they've prepared. If uh, if you need prayer for for anything. Man, I'd be happy to pray with you, agree with you. Maybe you got jammed up and you just need somebody to agree with you to in prayer. Man, I'm, I'm happy to do that. You need to visit, what, whatever it is. Man, I'm happy to help. And none of this applies. You don't know Jesus as your Savior. You can't remember a day that you received Christ as your Savior. But you don't even know. If I were to die today, they, I'd love that song, What Then? If Jesus comes tomorrow, what then? I don't know. There were ten virgins, five were, five were taken, five were left. Which one are we? If you don't know, let me introduce you to a man who loves you just like you are. It don't matter if you got whiskey on your breath. He loves you. He wants you. Died for you. Paid the whole price for you. He'd take you just like you are. Man, y'all go ahead and pray. Ooh, I've heard a thousand stories of a good father church You're I sing it to him straight to him picture to God in your, in your mind when you sing this Do and, and don't just read the words off of the, off of the screen tell God
That's right. Hey, one last thing. Uh, Bill Britton, uh, our own Trails in Margie Britton, her husband passed away, Mr. Bill. Uh, services are going to be at Raider and Longview. Visitation is 6 to 8 Monday. The service is Tuesday at noon. So uh, if y'all want to love on that family, y'all continue to lift up that family in prayer. Band, thank y'all for coming. God bless you.